got an electric line tied into this electricity from the Kuni Kunis, and it's running and connecting to this hog fence. And the hogs are able to go all in here, clean up all this underbrush and poison ivy or whatever they want to eat, the grass and such. Lots of yummy blackberries and privet and hopefully they'll leave the stuff that they're not supposed to eat alone. Most free range animals know not to eat the toxic plants, but they are loving it. That one got zapped and went back in. Feeling a little, uh, feeling a little scared right now. <laughs> but the others have been zapped too and they're staying in and just staying away from that fence mainly. All right, Ryan has the boars separated. We have had a lot of rain in Georgia, so excuse the mud. They are separated from the sow. He's got the pallet wall reinstalled. Hey, Ryan, good yeah. job. Hi. Good job. Thanks. So we're able to open up their door and let them out into the grazing area. Or we can open up her door, which is what we have right now. So she's out there grazing, enjoying herself for the last little bit before she has her babies. Bill, don't climb in your water. You don't go in your water. That's what that water is for. For swimming, not this one. The baby coonies are getting very big. Doing really well. We're going to be doing some home searching soon for these guys. We are keeping a boar for ourselves. Hi. Hi. You're so cute. That's one boar. And the other boar is one of the spotted ones. The rest are female. How oh, they want food. They see me and they see they, they think I have food for them. Yeah. Spoiled babies. They've been handled. They've been loved. They've been fed. They are happy and getting close to weaning. Bill's teaching the babies how to take mud baths. They like it. That feels good in this Georgia heat, huh? Got you some fresh cold well water and some nice mud. <laughs> Build up all the way around this whole circle. What do you guys think? You excited? Yeah. yeah. Now it's Whoa. already. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Whoa, it's cold. I bet it's cold. <laughs> Are you guys ready? All right, we're getting our ear tags. We're getting pictures and video, DNA tests, the works. So what is all this for, Sabrina? Registering in DNA. Um, so do you have to do DNA for pig? Coonie if you want to register them for Cooney Coonies, yes, they have to be DNA tested. And it's just pulling the hair follicles. Um, they also are getting their ear tags today, but they are not getting their what's well, mandatory ear tags for pigs. They are just getting basic ones. And then when the mandatory ones come in, we will just cut these ones and fill in the holes so we don't have to pierce their ears again. Um, but all pigs in the United States are supposed to be ear tagged with 840 ear tags um, so that they can be trapped. Oh no, you're so angry. And that's mainly for biosecurity. For biosecurity, yes. Even if you were to take a pig to slaughter um, at a USDA facility, they will have to have an ear tag. Um, simply so they can trace it back to the farm if something were wrong with the pig or they found something going on. All right, so when you record this, you're getting DNA, you're tagging, and then you're marking whether it's male or female. Yes, whether or not it has wattles. And um, the coloration, too? 
Um, you can, but we take the picture, so that's kind of obvious, um, so that we can use it. What we're doing right now is simply for letter notification, um, so that we can see him pulling hair follicles. Nice. Yep. You need 20 to 30. Oh, no. That didn't hurt. Put it in the bag for DNA. Yes. because they're pigs and they roll around in the mud a lot. There's always a slight danger. This guy cried a lot more than the other ones. Easy peasy. Uh, there's always a slight danger, but I mean, as long as you keep an eye on it. I've never had one. Are you ready? Do you got pictures of them already? No. Nope. Her? Her? Thank you for covering me in mud. Never, never gonna get out of here without being covered. 